Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure vehicle review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarlane DC Multiverse, the Batman Bat Cycle. Now this is the first piece of McFarlane, the Batman merchandise that I've seen. I found this guy at Target. Now a few days ago I went to Target, I gave him the DCBI number for the single figures, the DCBI number for the Bat Cycle, and for the Batmobile Beast. They said the Bat Cycle was coming on 114, but their dates are often wrong. In fact, it said the single figures came on 1-9, but they never received them. The system said they didn't get them. On my way to work today, I decided to stop by and try my luck. Went in, shelf was totally empty, so I was going to find an associate with a scanner to punch in the DCPI number. But lo and behold, there was a guy stalking them right next to me. I went ahead and snatched it up. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging. As you can see, the Batman, age of 12 plus, DC Multiverse, this is the Bat Cycle. The top, you can see into the package, the Batman, McFarlane toys. One side, the Batman, Bat Cycle. Other side, DC Multiverse, Bat Cycle. Bottom, got a bunch of credits. There is a barcode, in case that helps anybody. And in the back, a bunch of other figures. Here's the Bat Cycle. Here's Penguin, Countman, Riddler, and the Batman. Looking very forward to getting all those guys. As far as I know, this has only been being spotted at Target as far as in actual stores. I am sure that GameStop and Walmart and Amazon will be getting them any day now. So with no further ado, let's open it up. And of course, I did get two of these bat cycles. One of which to open and enjoy, and one to keep unopened in my complete 6 and 7 inch unopened Batman related action figure collection. So now I have this bat cycle, and I don't have a proper Batman to ride it. That's how it goes sometimes. Here it is, next to the White Knight bat cycle, exact same size package. And then, next to the Death Metal bat cycle, a little bit of a smaller packaging here. Alright, now that we got this vehicle out of the package, here it is with all the accessories laid out. It does come with a display stand, a collector's card, and then an alternate right hand for the Robert Pattinson Batman. Kind of surprised the Batman didn't come with that hand, but it's probably cheaper for them to include with the Bat Cycle, as they're going to make a lot less of them than they are the actual Batman figure. Now before we look at the accessories, let's talk about and check out the actual vehicle. So here is the Bat Cycle. They're also making a Bruce Wayne Drifter Cycle. Start with the front. It's got one headlight here. One could kind of argue maybe some of the lines, kind of batman ear looking. The wheels rubber, got some nice tread on them, hubcaps, nice little bit of detail in there, wheel does spin, does rotate at the front, handlebars, different various sort of dash type things on here, it's got a little compartment, looks like fuel exhaust, a lot of different shades, silver, gold, black, gray, back wheel, doesn't rotate but it does spin, a little bit thicker than the front wheel, Seat, pretty good side. Might be able to put two figures on here. Not sure if Batman and Calvin both get on this in the movie. Pretty much the exact same thing on the other side. Looks very nice. Kind of Batman in his early days, Bat Cycle. Thing does not really stand up on its own. That's why it comes with a stand here. Now let's take a look at its accessories. It's all pretty boring stuff. We have the display stand collector's card, and then an alternate right hand for Batman. Starting off with the hand, it is a gripping hand to hold the handlebar. I'm assuming he's going to have a left gripping hand included with the figure. Then we have the display stand. Nothing really fancy here. It's a black circle. The back tire is going to sit in here and allow it to stand freely. Then we have the collector's card. As you can see, Batman riding the Bat Cycle, the Bat Cycle from The Batman. The back, a little description if you want to read it. Go ahead and pause now. Here's the Bat Cycle without the stand, simply leaning against the chair. Now, no matter what you do, you cannot get this thing to balance and not fall over. It just cannot stand on its own, no kickstand or anything like that. And here it is, utilizing the display stand. The back wheel is a little bit thicker and fits in it properly. And it does not work with the front wheel at all. 
So it's definitely nice they included the display stand, but personally, I am not a big fan of stands. I would much rather the thing be able to stand up on its own, a little kickstand on the side, or maybe a little bar that would go down here, something not too visually noticeable. This display stand is very obvious. Now let's check out the measurements of this thing. So going from one wheel to the other, about 10 inches deep, and then from the lowest to highest point, about 4.75 inches tall. Now let's look at the action features, and there's really not that much. I mean, it's a bike, it drives, serves its purpose. Really the only things that got going on, front wheel, back wheel spin, front can rotate about that much. You can put the figure on top of it, put in the display stand. Beyond that, it's a really cool looking bike. I decided to switch to a street scene type diorama for the rest of this video. Here's going to be the Bat Cycle in the middle of the Gotham streets. And here's a closer look at the Bat Cycle in the streets. I wanted to give everyone a little bit of a closer look at the cycle. Here's the front of the cycle. Imagine this thing driving at you. Now it's really cool that McFarlane's making the Bat Cycle. But where's that damn Batmobile? That would be a great vehicle for McFarlane to make. And here's a cycle from the back side. Normally, this would be the part of the video where I show this bat cycle next to a bunch of different The Batman figures. But unfortunately, I don't have any of them yet. The closest thing I have is going to be this DST or Diamond Select Toys Westworld Bernard. He's played by Jeffrey Wright, same guy that plays Gordon. Now, it doesn't look like McFarlane is going to be giving us an Alfred or a Commissioner Gordon. And if they don't, at least I have this guy. He's seven inch scale and should fit in nicely with the rest of the line. Now unfortunately, I don't have any other figures from the Batman yet. Most importantly, I don't have the Batman to ride this Bat Cycle. So for now, we're going to have to make do with some other Batman figures. Here are several different Batman figures based off the comics from McFarlane next to this Bat Cycle. Let's check out a couple of them riding it. Here's the Dark Knight's Metal Batman riding on this thing. Batman feels a little too big for it, and this Batman has really limited range of neck motion. He can look only down on this Bat Cycle. And here's the White Knight Batman on this Bat Cycle. He's a much better fit. And here are several more Batman figures from different various forms of media next to this Bat Cycle. Here's the Arkham Knight Batman on the Bat Cycle. He looks pretty cool in there. Then, here's the Ben Affleck Bat Flag on top of this Bat Cycle. Also looks pretty cool. We've seen some teases of the Batflick Batman riding a Bat Cycle in The Flash. Doesn't look like this, but it's still pretty cool. And here are a few more Batman figures next to the Bat Cycle. Here's the Death Metal Batman riding the Bat Cycle. Looks cool too. Here's the Topic Farland designed Batman on this thing. Now, style wise, it fit pretty good, but his leg articulation is kind of poor, can't get him on there properly. Now, Here's the Flashpoint Batman on the Spat Cycle. My Flashpoint Batman has some similar issues with his legs, like the Todd McFarlane designed Batman. Hard to get him fit on there properly. Here's the New 52 Red Hood on the Bat Cycle. This Bat Cycle looks kind of generic. Could be a sort of a regular motorcycle for your figures. This looks okay, although I couldn't really get his arms to the handlebars and his feet on the pedals properly. And here's the new Gotham Knights Red Hood riding this thing. Fits pretty decent. In Gotham Knights, you see all four of the heroes riding different various bat cycles. Definitely looks different than this, but cool to see him on a motorcycle. Here's the three Jokers back around this thing. Although I can get her feet on the pedals, her arms are not going to reach the handles at the same time. Then, here's Lobo on the spike. He is way too big for this thing, and his legs don't spread out far enough to sit properly. Kind of gives me some concern if they make a future bike for Lobo. Now let's check this thing out, next to some other Bat Cycles. Here it is, next to McFarlane's White Knight Bat Cycle. This is in its shortened form. Then, next to it fully extended. And here it is, next to McFarlane's Death Metal Bat Cycle. And before we go on to more Bat Cycles, here it is with the McFarlane Bat Raptor. This is the only other vehicle McFarlane has made so far. Although I guess people are starting to find the Beast now too. Here it is, 
next to Mattel's Movie Master Batpod. Two pretty similarly scaled live cinematic movie bat vehicles, both bat cycles. And here, next to the Mafex Batpod, then next to the SH Figure Arts Batpod, and here it is, next to a DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series Bat Cycle. Here it is, next to a couple of Mattel Bat Cycles, one of which was from Justice League, and one's from the Batman Missions line. They're both for the basic 6-inch figures, and both use the same mold and sculpt. Then, next to a DC Collectibles, DC Icons Batgirl Bat Cycle. And now, next to a Hot Wheels 112 scale 1966 Bat Cycle. And here, next to a Mattel Justice League Bat Cycle. Then, with a Kenner Batman and Robin Robin's Redbird Cycle. And finally, next to an older Toy Biz Batman 1989 Bat Cycle. Now let's check this thing out, next to some action figures from different various companies, to see how it fits in both scale and style wise, in case you don't know which lines you can use with it. Since it's a McFarland vehicle, it's typically the 7 inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect, and work way smaller. I'm going to include as many Batman figures as I can during these comparisons. I'll try to put at least one figure from each line on the vehicle. Here it is with some McFarlane toys. Here's Johnny Silverhand from Cyberpunk 2077 right on this thing. He fits okay. These other two figures are not articulate enough to get on the bike. And here are some Jack specific wrestling figures next to the bike. There's not a chance they'll fit on there. Their legs are not articulated enough. And now, with some DST or Diamond Select toys. Here's John Wick on this thing. Not a bad fit. Then, here are some DC Direct and DC Collectibles Batman figures next to the bike. The Arkham Origins Batman fits, but his arms will definitely not reach the handles. And here, with some NECA Batman figures. Here's the NECA 90s comic Batman on this thing. Fits okay. Then, here's some Mattel wrestling figures next to the bike. This Elite Undertaker looks and fits pretty good on the bike. And now, next to some Jazzwares AEW wrestling figures. They fit okay. Starting to get a little bit too small for the bike. And here it is, next to some Mezco 112 Collective Batman figures. And the Mezco guy fits. It works, but he's getting to be too small. The legs are on the pedals, but the arms do not come anywhere close to the handlebars. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse Batman figures. And I mean, yes, technically he fits. But they're far too small for the bike at this point. And here are some Mafex figures next to the bike. Here's the Mafex Hush Batman on this thing. Yeah, technically he fits, but he's too small. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. As and I'm sure it's getting painfully obvious. The smaller the figures, the less they fit. And here are some SH Figure Arts Batman figures next to this. And I mean he fits, but once again, Seems too small. And finally, here it is, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. And the Jazz Wars Fortnite figures are about the smallest thing I collect. Way too small. So overall, it's a very nice bat cycle. The paint and sculpt are excellent. I don't see any issues there. The action features are pretty good. I mean, the wheels move. It can kind of turn. It holds a figure. It drives. Does what it's supposed to do. Rating this thing is kind of difficult. My first thought was giving it an 8 out of 10. But honestly, I can't rate this thing yet. I haven't seen the movie. I don't have the proper Batman that goes with this thing. It's just impossible to fully judge it as is. But, as is, it's a very nice vehicle. Yeah, it's a Bat Cycle, but it doesn't scream Batman. So you can easily use this thing for a wide variety of purposes in your action figure world. Great for 7 inch figures. A big bike for some of your bigger figures. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.